Join the people on the move. People who are hungry for new experiences with our God. Our vocation is not religion, but a deeper relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you are ready to join us in our pursuit of God, you are most welcome at Go Center on plot number 17734 Nanguenya Road. We congregate on Sundays at 8.30 and 11 hours. Gospel Outreach Fellowship, the people on the move. sets wherever you are at this moment in time. I want to greet you in Jesus' name and I want to ask everybody here at Girl Center to give you a very, very special welcome. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Well, here we are coming together to be the house of God. You see, we are not going to the house of God. We are the house of God. When we come into the house of God, that means we are actually assembling because each and every one of us is a living stone in the house of our God. Once you have received Christ as your Lord, as your Savior, you are part of the house of God. And it's so important for us to gather and demonstrate that, yes, we are together. We are one body. We are in Christ, united by his love, united by what he has done for us. And today we want to take time once again to listen to the word of God. You know, as we are together, Sunday for Sunday, and uh, many of us or some of us are going to meet in different groups for prayer, for, for Bible study. It's very important because every time God is speaking to our lives, God is transforming our lives. God is doing something in order to take us towards our destiny. So today I want to talk about something which I believe is very important. In fact, this is one thing one needs always to talk about, and that is change, all right? If there is anything secure or anything sure in this world, then it's change, you know? If there's anything that doesn't change, that means it's change, because change is always there. All right? So are you ready to change today? Uh, well, I'm not so sure. You know, change is something which we don't like so much. We don't welcome change so much. Uh, let's talk about it. Okay, let's turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. As I begin to speak about the agony of change. Change is not easy. Change sometimes is very agonizing, very tough. You know, we already realize that when a caterpillar is changing into a butterfly, it is uh, something extraordinary. And the word which is used uh, to transcribe this, uh, this change is metamorphosis. And this is the very word which is used in the Word of God many times to describe the change and the transformation which has to happen in our lives from where we have been where we have come from, where to where we are going. So let us read from 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12 and 13. And the Bible reads here, If you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life are not different from what others experience. And God's face, God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, 
He will show you a way out so that you can endure. Praise the Lord. I want to just uh, emphasize verse 13. The Bible says, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. You know, many times we think, you know, what I'm going through, others don't understand because it is too much. You know, I'm going through more than anybody else. But let me tell you, what you're going through, many others are going through. Maybe all of us are going through. Of course, there may be degrees of differences, but nevertheless, we are all going through tough times, through hardships, through difficulties. And when God says that, he also says God is faithful, all right? No matter what kind of transformation you are going through, no matter what temptations are awaiting you somewhere along the way, God is faithful. And the Bible says he will not allow the temptation to be more than what you can stand, all right? There are many people who thought that temptation was more than they can stand. And, uh, well, some of the people have just given up on their way. You know, but the Bible tells us that the righteous man can fall seven times, but he will always rise again. Amen? So I want to speak to you. If you have fallen, if you have experienced a failure in your life, you know, don't remain there. Don't remain in the, in the land called failure. Don't remain in the area which is called sin, but rise up again. Rise up again, because God is faithful. Amen? And the Bible says, when you are tempted, he will show you a way. I like this. God is saying he will show you a way out of that temptation, out of that situation, so that you can endure. Praise the Lord. So I've got good news for you today. No matter what you carry, no matter what temptations you face, no matter what hardship you go through, there is always a way out. And God is showing you that way. That's why it is so important that we take time to listen to the Word of God. Because when we hear what God is saying to us, He will always show us a way out. Amen? Do you need a way out? Are you in trouble right now? You know, maybe some of us have gone through hard times, but there's a way out. Let us turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. So we have heard God is faithful, amen? And so 2 Corinthians 4, 16 says, that's why we never give up. Praise the Lord. So our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. Our spirits are being renewed, going through a metamorphosis every day. Okay, there is an old nature in us which is dying, and there's a new nature which is being renewed day by day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Praise the Lord. All right. You have seen there, there's change. A lot of change happening, you know. There are things which we see which are going. And there are things which we cannot see right now. They're coming. They're becoming ever more real. There are failures which are going. There is sin which is going. But there is something which the Bible calls the renewing of our mind, the renewing of our spirit, which is a reality, and which, is, which needs to take root in our lives and become more and more and ever glo more glorious in our lives. Amen. Let's turn to the book of Philippians. You know, when we come to church, we need to go in the Word because the Word of God is where our strength lies. If you are dried up, if your joy has gone, you need to go into the Word of God. If you have had failure in your life, if sin has taken over, you need to go into the Word of God because there you get strength. 
and you are able to overcome because of the word. That's what our nourishment is all about. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. The Bible says here, therefore my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, I, I think that is real obedience, isn't it? Those of you who have children, you know, I mean, sometimes children obey just because you are there and you are looking. But when you are not there, all kinds of things can happen. But this is good obedience, which the Philippian church has been demonstrating, because they were not only obedient when Paul was there, but they have learned to obey whether Paul was there, whether their pastor was there, or whether he was not there, all right? So he says very clearly, I treasure that. Not only have you been obedient in my absence, but you have been obedient, well, in my presence and my absence. Now listen to this, and this is what I want to uh, put your mind to. You know, but much more now in my, in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Let me read the whole sentence again. Therefore, my dear friends, you have, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. As you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast one day on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. Praise the Lord. These are powerful words and we want to dissect this word because what is in this word, it is so important for all of us. We thank God for his presence. We thank God for his grace. We thank God that he speaks to us and he speaks to us right now through his words. He speaks to us through a voice, through somebody God has sent and that's me. All right? Are you hearing me? All right. As I said earlier on, there's one thing that doesn't change, and that is change. Okay? Change is always there. If anything, you can be sure that change will always happen. But unfortunately, many people resist change. In fact, the majority of people resist change. And yet, there is no way that change can be resisted. You know, either you change or else you will be overpowered by what is happening. You know, when a tsunami is coming, you, get be you better get out of the way. If you don't get out of the way, it will bury you. And that's exactly what happens with change. You can either cooperate with what God is doing in our world, or you will be buried. That's why change is so important. Now, as I entitled my message today, The Agony of Change, change is not easy. It's not easy for anyone. It's not easy for you. It's not easy for me. Change is a challenge every time. You know, when we have made everything comfortable for ourselves, we'd love to sit back, you know, and, 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 and just re relax. And unfortunately, today we have got so much uh, in our homes in terms of media, television, and, uh, you know, music sets and computers and all kinds of gadgets which just want us to sit back and relax. But life is challenging. Life is more than just sitting back and relaxing. Life is a journey. And we need to remain on the journey. We cannot stop on the journey. You see, I'm not a very old man, but in the few years I've been on earth, not very many years, but uh, quite a number of years, I've seen tremendous change. When I was born, it was only a few years after Second World War. And you know, when I started growing up, of course I didn't know anything about the war, uh, apart from the stories which I heard my father and his friends talk about. 
because my father and some of his uh, soldier friends, they always met, you know, every, every other month or so, they came together and they talked about stories of the, of the war, you know. So I heard about the war, but I didn't experience it. I don't know. And of course, when you are a child, you don't realize, you know, that the world which you are born into had just gone through a lot of quakes, a lot of problems, a lot of difficulties. But I was born into such a world without realizing it. But then, of course, I saw change happening. And you know, if you have been born maybe in the last 20 years or so, something similar has happened to you. You know, you have been born into a situation which was very difficult. Some of us were a little older. We have seen quite a lot of changes where we were standing in queues waiting for some sugar, you know, or waiting for some millimeter or you know, buying some bread, and it was not, not so easy. You know, some of you who are young, you don't have a clue what this all, of, all of this means. You know, time is moving fast. So some change is good, okay? Some change is very welcome. You know, always when things get better, we, 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 we like change. When we don't like change is when it's tough, when it's difficult to accept. So I was born into a world which was divided. You know, there was East and West. There were empires. And the country I was born into was a divided country, East and West. And I remember when we were young, in school, we were taken to the, to the boundary where, where you could see a fence as far as your eyes can see, you know, and every, every now and then there was a tower where people are shot when they're trying to run away from the East. That's, that was a tough world. And you know, when we were going to school, we were told, don't expect a change. You know, this thing is just the way it is. We have to accept it. All right? One time I went to our former capital, now again capital Berlin, and there, there was a wall. You know, some of you may know that. There was a wall going right through the city of Berlin which used to be our capital and now again is our capital. But at that particular time when I grew up, it wasn't. And so it was, was difficult, you know. People said, we have to accept it. This is it. Politicians were saying, we should not have too much expectation because there's a superpower on the east, there's a superpower on the west, and we are kept in that situation, so we have to accept the situation. Well, that's how I grew up. But as we know, if I look back in the world today, it has changed. Today, the country I was born in is no longer a divided country. The superpowers, which were very super in those days, are not so super anymore. Okay? Power has been eroded. Money is no longer what it used to be. The world is changing. The world is changing tremendously. It's a reality. And even your world is changing. You know, we need to, need to understand, when I came to Zambia in 1982, any time of the day I could take my car and drive through the city, even at the, at the, at the, at the you know, rush hour. Maybe you just wait for a few cars to pass and you also pass. Sometimes you would be in Lusaka driving 11 hours, 12 hours, almost alone. Nobody else is there. It has changed. Today, if you want to go to town, you have to plan for it. Okay? Because it is tough, you know? You have to find your way. Or else, if you don't plan for it and you just go in the wrong time, you are going to spend hours and hours just to go from A to B, which may only be a short distance. If you have a bicycle, you will definitely be faster. Maybe even walking. So the world is changing. We all realize that. Very soon we are celebrating anniversary, independence. Another year has uh, been clocked. And when we look back, we can see tremendous transformation, tremendous change. And a lot of change is nice, it's good. Some of the change is tough, it's not easy. Some of the change brings more challenges and more difficulties. 
But I think we all realize to re reject change, that would be very foolish. You know, it would just be a child that is born and says, I don't want to grow. I want to just remain the way I am. Now, even growing up is not easy sometimes. And you know, I think all of us, we have experienced, you know, that when we are shifting from one school to another, we would rather stay in the school where we have been. I remember that very well, you know. When you shift maybe from primary school, you go to another high school, maybe somewhere else. Uh, I said, oh, I don't want to shift. I, I, like with my, I like to be with my friends. I like to be around my friends, you know. Who am I going to find there where I'm going? I don't know. Have you ever been in a situation like that? This happens. You know, that's what change is all about. And I think it's important, as agonizing as change sometimes may be, it is important that we learn to welcome change. It's important that we receive change with open arms. All right? Every one of us is undergoing change. I can say this with a hundred percent degree of certainty. I know you have all changed. You don't believe me? You didn't fall from the sky like that. Am I right? When you were born, you were not the way you are today. So you have changed. And some of you have seen change in the last 10, 15, 20 years. I've uh, been some, with some of you for a long time. I've seen you change. Some of you, you were like that, like that, like that, and here you are today. So change is reality. Amen? And so please don't, don't just reject change. You know, we all have been coming from somewhere, born at one time. You know, we, we grow up into teenagers, youth, we get married. We have a family, and we are running towards a destiny. We are running towards a place which we don't control. After birth, is, there comes constant transformation. Okay? In fact, even before birth, you know, from the time of inception, change is a reality. And that's what I want to talk about. Now, we, when I say we, I, I, I talk about we evangelicals, okay? Evangelicals are very good to talk about being born again. Now, don't get me wrong, being born is important. If you were not born, you wouldn't be here today. Am I right? So yes, it's important to be born. But I think you agree with me that you can't speak about being born for 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years, and then nothing ever comes thereafter. Being born is an experience at one particular time, and that brings us into, into these worlds. And if we are born again, praise the Lord, we believe that, it's important for everybody, but it brings us into a new rela reality, into a new relationship with Christ. That means we are children of the Most High. But I think we are overemphasizing over the being born again uh, uh, issue. We are underemphasizing what happens after. And I want to talk to you about what happens after. Okay? Are you ready for that? Birth is but one event in our lives. Only one. I don't know how many, how many of you know from your parents, from your mothers, uh, how you were born, you know? I, I, I quizzed my mother several times, you know? How, how was I born? What happened, you know? Uh, you know, she told me it was very cold. Everything was frozen. But on the day you were born, there was church going on. You know, people were going in church when, when, uh, when uh, you were about to come. And when, when you were born, people came back from church. There are a few things I know about my birth, but I, I don't remember, you know. I was there, but I don't remember. I don't know, about how about you? Were you there at your birth? I mean at your birth. Of course you were there. But you can't remember, just like me, isn't it? 
Maybe you remember a few things you were told, but uh, that's about it. After we are born, there begins a relent unrelentless transformation in our lives. There is a sequence of events. In fact, every day, we change a little. Every day. Maybe not enough for people who just uh, are around you all the time to notice and see, but if somebody is away for a while, comes back after some time and says, oh, have you changed? You know, some people tell you, no, when you're going on the journey, when you come back, he says, oh, you have become fat. Has this happened to you before? You know, in fact, it has happened to me many times. You know, when I go on a journey, people think I have become fat. And I, sometimes I have actually stood on the scale and I know I have actually reduced my weight, but people think I have become fat <laughs> just because I was away for some time. You know, anyway, change is reality, isn't it? It is a reality. When we go into grade one, we begin to change. It's a journey of change. You go grade one, you go through it, complete it, hopefully progress straight into grade two. Some of us, we have to repeat, you know. If we are not successful in what we are tested on and what we are examined in, then we have to repeat, isn't it? That is true in the natural, it's true in the spiritual too. So, you see transformation. How many of you would love to go to grade one for 10 years? That would be boring, isn't it? So, it's better to change. Are you agreeing with me? It's better to move on from grade one to grade two, grade three, grade, three, grade four, grade five, to grade 12, then to college, university, or whatever. You know, it's always better to change. We need change. Change is a reality. And we need it very much. But you see, it's very interesting that what we accept quite easily in the natural, sometimes we reject it in the spiritual. Because as a church, and I mean in the evangelical arena, most of us, we always talk about being born again, being born again, being born again, being born again, being born again. You can only be born once, am I right? Only once. You get born once, you live your life, and once you have to die and give an account to your creator. That's what the Bible tells us. So being born is good, it's very much important. But once you are born, you don't need to talk about being born again anymore. Because then you are alive, okay? Then you need to live your life. And you know, a lot of Christians, they are getting stuck along the way. And you see, that's what the Bible is talking about. The Bible talks about being transformed, being changed. Philippians says, you need to work out, you need to continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And you know, there's a lot of misunderstanding about that because people think, well, well when I have received Jesus Christ, I got saved. Uh, from that time on, you know, I'm no longer part of um, the kingdom of darkness. I'm now part of the kingdom of light. And that is true. That's what the Bible says. You know, that's how salvation comes to us. But salvation is not completed at the day of your birth. Just as much as you are a human being, a complete human being, you know when a baby is born, that baby has got everything. A normal human uh, baby is born with ten fingers. Do you know that? Hello, are you with me? I need to work with you, you know. I need you to be with me, not that you are going somewhere sleeping, huh? And I, I, I don't want to see any, any, any gadgets around here where you are playing things here, Okay. <laughs> I need you to be with me, and uh, we want to, to check the, what is the Word of God saying to us. All right? So, do you agree that when a baby is born, that the baby is complete? Do you agree? It's, a, it's complete as far as all the limbs are concerned. 
But what about the brain? Is the brain complete? Has the growth happened? You know, is a baby the, the way it should be for the rest of life? No. Am, am I right? So, you see, so we need to understand one thing. You know, salvation is a wonderful thing. It comes to us, it is given to us completely when we are born again. But then it needs to go through a lot of development, just like a baby. Okay, a baby is born, and everybody who had a baby here, you know, every parent, every father, every mother who had a parent uh, or is barren and who has had a baby, you know what I'm talking about. You know, or every brother or sister who had a younger sibling, you know what I'm talking about. A baby is complete, but not complete. All right? That baby needs to grow, and that's exactly what the Apostle Paul is talking about. He says, you need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, you have not arrived. You have started a journey, but you are not at your destiny yet. Okay? And that's why he says in another scripture, as we have been reading in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12, when you are standing strong, don't be proud about that. But make sure that you are careful so that you don't fall. Now, God is faithful. For sure, he is. And every situation we have to pass through, he is there for us. He wants to help us. He wants to support us. He wants to give us what we require. But we must understand that we have a responsibility for our own lives. You know, there are some, some kids, when they fail in school, they always blame the teacher. Or they blame their friends. Or they blame their home. Am I right? Are you one of them? I hope not. Okay? There are some people who are very good, you know, when, when they fail, everything else is... Is, is, is to blame, but not themselves. So in other words, they don't take responsibility for their own lives. And you know, some Christians do exactly the same thing. In fact, more Christians do that than even children do it. You know, when things go wrong, we blame somebody else. You see, when Adam and Eve fell, you know, they didn't want to accept that they were at fault. They blamed always, you know. Adam was blaming Eve. Eve was blaming the serpent. You know, only the serpent could not say much. But of course, the serpent was the devil. He, he knew that he was at fault. But Adam and Eve didn't want to be at fault. Now, understand, we are in this world so that we are being transformed from glory to glory. We are supposed to be changed. You know, if there is one type of glory in your life, there should be a, an ever-increasing type of glory, as the Bible tells us. We will go there just in a short while. So, birth is important. But we not, need not to overemphasize it. If I see you, you don't need to tell me that you are born. Hello? Because I can see that you are, you are alive. So you don't need to tell me, ah, oh, pastor, do you know one day, one day I was born? Of course you are born. I can see you. All right? And if you can pray, if you can praise the Lord, if you are faithful to the Lord, I know that you are born again. Okay? The question is, are we really being transformed? Are we being renewed day by day? Are we going through a life of transformation? And that is really what God wants to see in our lives. You see, the, the Word of God says we should never give up. And so our bodies may die, you know, so things will actually fall off after some time. Our spirits are being renewed day by day. But you know, your spirit will be not renewed automatically. It's your responsibility to renew it. Okay? It's your responsibility to live in the Word of God so that something is going to happen in your life. If somebody goes to grade one, you know, and all of us, we have been there, you know, I, I believe so. Maybe some of you are so clever that you went straight to grade two, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, 
But most of us, we started at the beginning. Am I right? I started at the beginning. Now, it's not enough, you agree with me, it's not enough to sit on your table and hold your pen or your pencil. Am I right? You need to use your brain. And you have to expand your brain all the time. So if the teacher is teaching you one and one is two, you need to master that, okay? You need to master the ABC. You need to master all kind of concepts, all kind of formulas along the way. Of course, that's what we call education, and it's very important. But just as much as we need to learn in our natural life, we also need to learn in our spiritual life. And it's very important that we get involved in doing that. Now, many of you may say, well, at least I come to church every Sunday. Praise the Lord if you come to church every Sunday. At least that's the, the absolutely bare minimum. Because, you know, coming together as the body of Christ means that we are, we are uh, manifesting the body of Christ. You know, some people think I can worship the Lord from home. No, you can't. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, you cannot. Because you have to be part of the body of Christ. Only when we are together are we manifesting the body of Christ. And God will not do anything outside of his body. Okay? That's very important. Especially for some of you who think you just need to watch television from a distance. If there is no other way that you cannot come to a church, that may be fine. But actually, you need to be in the church. Very important. I'll talk about these other times. But let's understand, the Bible is clear to tell us that transformation is an ongoing exercise. You know, as long as we are breathing, as long as we are walking, as long as we have life in us, we need to transform, we need to change. Now, there's one problem, and I want to talk about this problem. You see, some people think, Change can come through a shortcut. I hope you are not one of them, you know. Have you seen a child who has gone to grade one, one year, and the next year to grade 12, and then everything was done? Is that happening? No. There's no shortcut. Am I right? No shortcut. Absolutely no shortcut. Tell your neighbor, no shortcuts. Now, I hope you understand this. You know, you, you can't come out of a, 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 a university degree from after, after going to grade two. It's not possible. You know, so you have to sit in that classroom for a whole year, you know, throughout all the, the weeks where uh, the, 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 the classes are on. You have to sit there. You have to work with the teacher. You have to learn. You have to study. You have to show yourself approved. Okay? And only when you are successful will you be promoted to the next grade. Am I right? And let me tell you, there is no magic here. Okay? It doesn't matter to how many witch doctors you go. Hello? Are you with me? There is no witch doctor which can promote you from grade one to university. It is not going to happen. You understand that? You know, I, I say this with a, with a purpose in mind. You know, because some Christians, they believe that even so, this may be true for the physical, for the spiritual, actually, you can jump. You know, you just get born again, tomorrow you are a hero of faith. And let me tell you, that does not happen. Are you with me? Okay, good. So, what happens in the natural must happen in the spiritual. All right? Even if it is spiritual, there are still natural rules which apply, you know? Or let me say supernatural rules. And the supernatural rules tell you very clearly that even Jesus had to be born, had to be in his father's house for 12 years before he was actually blessed in the temple of the Lord. By the time, uh, uh, and I've talked about this before, but the, by the time Jesus uh, was blessed in the temple, he knew the whole rules of the, of the Bible. He knew the whole, what we call Pentateuch or Torah in the Old Testament. 
you know, there are 613 commands or decrees, and a child with 12 years had to know them all. If I would uh, ask you to come forward and I was ask you for some, for some scriptures in the Bible that you maybe, you know, whatever is your, on, your, on your heart and mind, how many, how many scriptures would you be able to quote? I'm sure some, some of our children in Sunday school would do better than you. Am I right? But you know, when Jesus grew up, for 12 years he had to learn. 12 years. He learned all the 613 rules or decrees or commands in the Torah, in the Old Testament, the five books of Moses, as we call them also, from uh, Genesis to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Now, I don't know, some of you may not even have read through them once. I'm not trying to say, lift your hand, you know, but have you? I'm asking you. Have you even read them once, you know, from Genesis, every verse, Exodus, every verse, you know, Leviticus, every verse, Numbers, every verse, Deuteronomy, every verse. But you know, Jesus knew this by heart. Do you know that? No shortcuts. Are you with me? No shortcuts. Absolutely no shortcuts. Then, you know, Jesus came to the temple and he was in the temple. He was speaking to the people in the temple and the teachers of the law. And they got amazed about the wisdom which was in Jesus. Most of the other boys probably, they were just there because they had to and quickly they ran off to play. But Jesus remained in his father's house. Ah, that's amazing. Then he went back. And from then on, from 12 to 30, another 18 years, 18 years, everybody say 18. 18. Okay. Now, if you have a child of 18 years, that means now it has, that child has come of age, isn't it? You know, then by with 18 years you can vote. But amongst the Jews, that was not the case, you know. You had to grow up and Jesus had to be 30 years of age before he could enter ministry. Now he was Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Son of the living God. Amen? But there was no shortcut for Jesus. Are you with me? You know, I, I'm trying to build a case here, and I want you to, to really uh, write this down, because it's very important. No shortcuts. Tell your neighbor, no shortcuts. Okay. So Jesus knew... What is the right road to walk on? That's why when the devil came to Jesus and said, you know, Jesus, uh, I know what you want. I know you have come to, you know, take over the kingdoms of this earth. You know, you want to be the ruler of this earth. Actually, I've got a, I've got a good news for you. I can make it happen right now. I've got a very easy shortcut for you. Bah! Just like that. Only one condition. Hey, one condition anyway. Doesn't even, I don't even want money. I want you to do only one thing. And that is that you kneel down and worship me. And what did Jesus say? He said, oh, that's a great idea. Why should I wait for anything else? This is right on my, on my, on my plate here. You know, I can take it and, and accept it right now. Did he say that? No. Why did he not say it? Because Jesus knew the word. Okay? He knew what the will of God was for his life. And he knew the shortcut was not of God, it was of the devil. All right? Now that's very important because, you see, shortcuts usually are not given to us by God, they're given to us by the devil. Are you with me? You know, beware of shortcuts. Because God doesn't give you shortcuts. Okay, just like you have to go through grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4, up to grade 12, you have to be there in any class. You can't jump. In the same way, even in your spiritual life, there is no jumping. Are you with me? There's no jumping. You have to go through the transformation. And sometimes the transformation is painful. Sometimes, sometimes the transformation is hard but it is absolutely necessary. 
All right. Now, some people, they like miracles. Now, I like miracles too. And uh, in case you don't believe me, or do you, maybe you haven't heard from me, I have, I have seen some wonderful miracles in my own body. Okay? I had, I had uh, a broken back, and God healed me. Okay, when I was still young. You know, I could, I could have been in the, in the wheelchair for the rest of my life since I was, how old was I then? Maybe, maybe 13 or 14 years by that time. Okay? But God healed me. Okay, so I know God is a healer. And I want all of, our, of you to experience healing in your bodies, healing in your soul. That's very important. God healed me from cancer. I had a cancerous growth. And God healed me. So I know that God is a healer. I know that God can do whatever is required. But you see, there are certain things which God will not do. Okay? And I want you to, to take note of that. Okay? God can heal your body. He can heal your scars, your wounds, you know. He can heal, heal all kinds of things in your life. But you know what? God will not do. He will not change your character from being a child to being an adult. Your character, you have to have it changed through hard work. Are you with me? So, in other words, no holy water will change your character. No anointing oil will make you a hero. But, lo and behold, if somebody offers that, everybody's flocking there because people want shortcuts. Okay? You see, we have shortcuts since the day of the Garden of Eden because the devil came and says, you know, I, I, I want to tell you, you can be like God even now. You don't have to wait. Now, what they didn't even know is that they were already like God because they were children of God. You know, Adam is called the son of God. Okay? So he was already like God. But the devil was selling them something which wasn't even fake. It says you can be like God. But you must do one thing. You must eat from that tree over there. And what did God say that they should not do? Eat from that tree that is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But the devil said you must eat from that tree. Can you see what, what, what's happening there? Hello? You see, you need to know what God said. Because if you don't know what God said, you are going to go the wrong direction. And this is the problem of our days, Christianity. You know, our modern, so-called modern Christianity is a fake Christianity. Because we don't know the word, that's why we do all kind of, you know, I'm sorry, I don't, shouldn't use some words, uh, I know. <laughs> but you know what I'm, what I'm talking about, uh, all right? Amen. Amen. You know, just because we don't know the word, we can do anything. Anybody comes along and says, hey, do this, and you will see something will happen in your life. Let me tell you, the way prosperity comes to you is not by doing something foolish, but is simply by you meditating upon the word of God. Okay? Let me just quickly, quickly go to Psalm 1. We have been studying that yesterday when we had our leaders uh, consultation. Uh, and I just want to read only one verse or two verses from Psalm 1. You know, I'm sure everybody should be able to find that Psalm 1 very easy. Okay, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sits in the seat of mockers, all right? If you want to be blessed, stay away from evil and all form of evil, even if it sounds religious. If it is against the word of God, stay away. 
But his delight is in the law of the Lord. What is the law of the Lord? It's the word, isn't it? That's the law of the, of the Lord. So if your delight is in the law of the Lord and you meditate upon that law of the Lord day and night, then you are like a tree planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit, fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither, but whatever he does prospers. Hello? How do you prosper? By staying in the word of God. By meditating upon the word of God. By meditating upon it day and night. That's how you prosper. You know, there's nothing about, you know, you need to take some shortcut somewhere, you know, get some special, special gadget or some special thing, you know. I mean, uh, some people, they are selling, uh, you know, anointed earth, anointed soil, you know. And you say, if you eat this soil, then uh, things will go fine with you. That is nonsense. Or what is very common now is holy water. Okay. No shortcut, my friend. No shortcut. Eh? No grade one to university. Eh? No, no, it's not possible. You can't. Even holy water doesn't take you there. Because holy water is just water. There's no such thing like holy water. It's not there, I'm telling you. Anointing oil is not anointing oil. You know, listen. There's only one scripture in the Bible which talks about anointing. In uh, the book of James. Then in the Old Testament there is anointing about, you know, for priests and kings. You understand that? And uh, I'm telling you, when you go into how the anointing oil had to be prepared, you, a lot of things went in. But for us Christians, there is no doctrine which talks about anointing oil. No doctrine. You cannot make a doctrine out of one scripture. You can't. The Bible says that every truth must be supported by two or three witnesses. Okay? So let's not get confused and make some people rich just because they are manufacturing oil which they want you to buy. I'm telling you, there is no benefit on you to have that oil. You know, it's not the oil which benefits you, it's the prayer of a righteous man. Amen? Amen? It's the prayers in the family of, of the believers. It's the elders of the church who come together. Oil or no oil. There's some people who buy, buy oil and then they are putting the oil every day, you know. <laughs> I'm telling you, you are becoming more foolish every day. <laughs> because let me tell you, there is no miracle, there is no miracle whatsoever which makes you mature, you know, which makes you from a, from a baby into an adult. It cannot happen. There is a, there is a sequence of events which has to happen. We have to go through that. And you know, if you know your Bible, you know that this is true. If, if you don't like what I'm saying, please check it out. You know, come with, come with your scriptures and, and, and argue with me. The problem is that most of the people who are jumping for such things, they don't know the words. You know, when the devil comes and offers you something, you should be able to answer, it is written. Okay, whether it's true or wrong, you need to say it is written because you say, okay, I can confirm it or I cannot confirm it because I know the words. And when Jesus was speaking, he was able to say it is written. You know, so he demasked the devil. So he pulled the mask of the devil from his face and he said, you are the devil because you want something which is contrary to the word of God. Amen. Now, you see, that you can only do when you know the word. The biggest problem today is that many of us Christians, and I hope you're not one of them, are too lazy to meditate upon the word of God day and night. Too many of us are too lazy to read the word of God. We have time to sit in front of our TV sets for hours. We have time to read the newspapers and all of them maybe, you know, for hours. But we don't have time to read the word of God. Or maybe we just read one verse, you know, which somebody has picked out already, you know, 
And these are usually the verses which say, blessed are you, you know. But the Bible says that all scripture is good for teaching. Not just a few things. You know, you can't just say, okay, me, I like uh, John 3.16, so that's my scripture. Hey, hey, you. You can't eat the, 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 the same thing every day, you know. You can't just eat uh, Millie Mill without anything. Huh? Will, will you like that every day, Millie Mill, without relish, without the gravy, without anything on it, you know? Will you, would you like to eat that every day? No. We need to have something which is nourishing us. All right. So, we have seen one thing very clearly. There is no shortcut in our transformation. That's why the Apostle Paul says we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And if you stand, praise the Lord that you stand, but take care. Because falling is a possibility. Okay? Falling is a possibility. Now, how do we work out our salvation with fear and trembling? You know, number one, we need to have a constant regular, or whatever we call it, exposure to the Word of God, just as, as we have seen it in Psalms, chapter 1. It's a step-by-step -step process. It's slow but sure. And as I said, there's no quick fix. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, we read, I discipline my body like an athlete. Training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Do you hear that? This is the great Apostle Paul saying. He says, I have to discipline myself. That's why Jesus called his disciples disciples, because they needed to learn discipline. And there are a lot of Christians today who don't want to discipline themselves. Who don't have any discipline whatsoever. And I tell you, without discipline, you are not a son of God. Maybe you are just a baby. In the best of circumstances. You know, babies, they don't need discipline. They can cry anytime. Ah! You know, and mom has to find out what the cry means, you know. What do they want now? But if you are an adult, you cannot just cry all the time. You need to discipline yourself. Amen? So we must never give room to self-righteousness. We never have to say, well, I'm, 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 I'm okay, you know? And you see, sometimes people who are living in sin, you know, they call themselves Christians, but they are saying, no, in Christ I am what I am, you know? But they are you, everybody can see they are living dirty lives. Why is it that sometimes Christians can really bring shame into the house of God? You know, why is it that sometimes people who claim to be Christians are corrupt in their working places, are cutting corners, are doing things which are very bad? And you know, it brings, it brings a very bad smell to the, to the house of God, to the church. Am I right? Because these are indisciplined individuals who want to jump from grade one to grade 12, who think there is a shortcut, but there is no shortcut. You know, these things we have to learn, and they are not easy to learn. There are a lot of things to master in every grade which, uh, where, where you are taken to. Okay, so Paul says, I discipline my body. You know, I make sure that I run in order to win the prize. And that's not easy. It's not easy. So let's be careful as we walk, as we stand in the kingdom of God, that we are learning to go through a process of transformation, of change, that we do not fall. You see, when we deal with the old way of life constantly through the Word of God, eventually we'll become strong. You know, the, the Apostle Peter says at one, in one scripture in, um, in his letters 
that if you do these things, and I can't go into details now, but the things we are talking about here, if you do these things in a continuous manner, you will never fall. Amen? So in other words, if you are not cutting corners, you go through grade 1, 2, 3, 12, college, university, or whatever, then you will master what you have learned. Come into his eyes, there is healing there. Come into his eyes, there is joy. Let's praise Almighty God, lift his holy name. Come into his house to pray. Come into his house, there is healing there. Come into his house, there is joy.